He agreed, he agreed to spend the day with us on Wednesday to clear up all the loose ends before he went out to California. His mother insisted that he sign out of school properly. She was already thinking about his recovery, the time that he would leave Scientology, and that this would make it easier for him to <coughs> enter school if that was his choice. He also agreed at 1 p.m. on Monday that he and I would meet and I would drive him to the Sea Org in 48th Street and 10th Avenue in New York City. Probably the only place in America where you're probably safer inside Scientology than out. <laughs> Sunday night, we started to read all this information that we got that morning. It was horrendous. I couldn't believe this is going on in this country. But our emotions changed from fear for our son's safety to some sort of relief that we found people who understood this problem <coughs> could explain it to us and hopefully can explain it to our son. On Monday, I didn't realize these cards were so slippery. On Monday, April 2nd, I started to call more of the numbers I got the day before. One of them was the cult clinic. I got Arnie Markowitz. When you talk about your American superheroes, you've got to conclude Arnie. He helped me find people who could work on such, who were available to work on such a tight schedule. And got me in touch with some exit counselors. He said we needed family counseling. I said, okay, we'll drop Paul off at one or two o'clock when we got into the city, and we'll meet him at his office for family counseling. Paul kept calling that day to say he was going to be later and later. He finally arrived home at 7 p.m., and we had to cancel our family counseling with Arnie. During all the, this whole previous weekend, I was spending my time preparing for the Sea Org, which involves cutting off all my ties with reality. I, uh, I quit my job. My boss tried to talk me out of it to no avail. I also went back to school and I took my parents' advice and I signed out officially. And, and I remember as I was signing the thing, I had this like, little thing in my stomach telling me, do I want to do this? But then I said, no, no, I, got, I just felt compelled. I, I have to do this. This is the right thing to do. Furthermore, my best friend Matt and I had planned to go to Florida for spring break. We had this whole trip planned and I had to go tell him now that the trip was canceled because I was going to be in California. And of course, he was devastated, not because the trip was canceled, but because he just couldn't believe I was dropping out of school. After cutting off all my ties, I then arrived home on Monday night. By the time Paul came home, Barbara was already home, and the three of us drove into Manhattan from Long Island to drop Paul off at the Sea Org. We were greeted by two Scientologists. We reminded Paul about our meeting on Wednesday to spend the day as a family. <coughs> One of the Scientologists looked at us and said, well, there, there just won't be time for that. Paul is just too busy. I hit the ceiling. I looked right into his glassy eyes and I told him, all I hear from you people is about family, how Scientology and Dianetics helps relationships and families get together. All I've seen so far is a lot of lip service and no action. I also said that since my kid has been taken... <laughs> the applause was not concluded in the time I got. <laughs> <laughs> though, though, though it is appreciated. I also told him that since my kid's been taking your cockamamie communications course, he can't communicate at all. <laughs> the Scientologist quickly backed down and said, Paul, it might be a good idea if you went home Wednesday with your parents. <laughs> These two men who, who met us in the lobby had very glassy eyes and ridiculous, inappropriate looking smiles plastered on their faces. I will never forget that look and how remote and robotic they were. As we left, I told Bob that we had just met the Stepford men. We, be, we became even more terrified for Paul's safety and well-being, and we were determined now, more than ever, to extricate Paul from this organization immediately. We must try to prevent him from becoming one of those robotic people. The next day, the next day I spent the entire day doing more PTS handlings, which uh, consisted, the, the most memorable of, of the PTS handling was, was the bull baiting exercise in which I sit there staring at another Scientologist while the Scientologist can basically say or do anything he wants to try to get a reaction out of me. He'll say, you're such a loser, you'll be miserable your whole life, you know, you're no good, son of a bitch, you know, whatever he wants to say, and I'm supposed to just sit there like this and take it and not react. Now at the time I didn't really understand the significance of this, 
in retrospect, of course, it, it seems pretty obvious that they were anticipating I was going to you know, be exposed to some exit counselors who might be yelling in my face, telling me that I'm involved in a cult, and they wanted to make sure that I'd be able to sit there and stare at them and not react and not, and not give in to what they're saying. And uh, which, is, which is pretty interesting, because at this point in time, I knew nothing about exit counseling. I had no idea that my parents were planning an exit counseling, but the Church of Scientology knew that my parents were planning an exit counseling, and they did everything they could to prepare me for it. This is such a perceptive group. <laughs> on Tuesday, April 3rd, finalized the arrangements for an exit counseling on Wednesday. We were told we are moving too fast and that we need family counseling. This is about the 10th time I heard that, and I called Barbara in the office and I asked her if she was the cause of Paul being in a cult. She said no. I said, am I the cause of Paul being in a cult? She says, don't be ridiculous. I called the exit counselors back and said, we just had family counseling. Let's get on with it. On Wednesday, April 4th, we met with the, <coughs> the exit counselors. They suggested that Matt, Paul's lifelong friend and dearest friend, would be helpful during the exit counseling. Uh, and they would try to contact him. We hadn't heard from Paul all day. We kept recalling the org repeatedly and got the same stock answer. I'm sure you all heard. Your son is not available. At 12 o'clock, Paul called. It was the most bizarre conversation I've ever had. My articulate, loudmouthed son couldn't put two words together without a coach who I can hear on the other end of the phone advising him what to say. We argued, we pleaded, we cried, and they agreed that Paul uh, would meet us at 6 o'clock for dinner. No place or time limit was specified. Before we left, it was suggested that since they were probably programming Paul against his parents, that my dear sister Esther go along, since they wouldn't think of programming against her, nor would they dare try. This actually turned out to be a very good idea because Scientology had told me that I should go to a restaurant right down the street and stay there for no more than 45 minutes. All of a sudden, my aunt gets out of the car and I wasn't expecting to see her. And all of a sudden, there's hugs and kisses and, oh, it's so nice to see you. Haven't seen you in such a long time. Next thing you know, I'm in a car, Long Island Expressway, 60 miles an hour. Before I start looking at my watch, realizing, wait a second, wait, I'm supposed to be back in a couple of minutes. Where are we going? What's going on? And, and then they said, no, we were just, you know, we're going out. We got a place picked out. I'm like, well, where are we going to eat? What's going on? You know, they're supposed to be taking me out to dinner. And they're not really saying anything. And I'm starting, getting, you know, I'm starting to get a little suspicious here. And all of a sudden, like when, when they wouldn't tell me where we were going, that's when I started accusing them of kidnapping me. I said, help, help, I want to go back, you're kidnapping me. And, uh, and, and this, this could have almost been disastrous, but they were able to calm me down by telling me that, that my best friend, Matt, was waiting to talk to me as well. This got me extremely angry because, you know, my attitude was, look, you know, if my parents have a problem with Scientology, that's between me, them, and Scientology. Don't go dragging my best friend into this. And I was very, very annoyed that they were dragging Matt into this. And so... I decided to go along with them and cooperate to save Matt, basically, was, was the reason why I, I calmed down and, and went along with this. Well, they brought me to this hotel out in eastern Long Island. I walked into a hotel room. There were four exit counselors. Matt was there. Both my parents were there. And my aunt was there, eight of them and me. I felt like I walked right into an ambush. But I was determined to make it go right, as Scientology would say, because I had a PTS condition, and in Scientology, as long as you have a PTS condition, you cannot advance in Scientology, and I certainly would not be able to go out to California. I figured I had to handle my PTS condition, and the way to handle it was by convincing my parents to back off, getting them to approve of Scientology, or at least if they don't approve, not threaten the organization anymore. And I figured, this, this shouldn't be too hard. Scientology is a great organization. I, I can handle this. So I began uh, talking to the exit counselors. Now, now, the exit counseling began with two of the exit counselors who were former members of EST, and, and they started telling me their stories. Big, big mistake. Scientology's leader, L. Ron Hubbard, and the leader of EST, Werner Earhart, are arch enemies. Scientology had already programmed me and told me repeatedly that EST was one of the most horrible organizations in the world. It's a cult. Scientology even has the EST repair course to help people recover from the damage that Werner Earhart did to them in Est. So these exit counselors are telling me how horrible their experiences were, and I'm sitting there going, well, of course you had a horrible... That's Werner Earhart. It's Est. It's a cult. Didn't you know that? Hello? You know, and... 